Yeah, so I think there are three aspects that are highly relevant. So we have CIS and ICANS. These are the topics that have been talked about a lot. And as a novel aspect, we have the long-term cytopenias um, that are getting increasing awareness as we have patients at long-term follow-up. I think in the CIS setting, most centers um, are now very experienced and we are less challenges by CIS. But also, if we think of treating patients um, in an outpatient setting, um, this is still a very valid uh, topic. And I think there's interesting data that prophylactic tocilizumab and early steroids might um, abbreviate um, severe CIS. But I still think at this time point, we are not completely aware if the patient Patients that were treated in these early interventional prophylactic tosi steroid um, trials are they actually the same patient cohort? So I think this is a very interesting development, but I am still a bit cautious um, to translate this into everyday practice at this time point. Second aspect, neurotoxicity. I think this is still somehow a black box uh, for a lot of um, us, um, and it's still very challenging if it occurs. So there are interesting um, aspects like a GM-CSF directed antibody in clinical trial also given prophylactically. But I think at this point, we have no real novel um, insight how to deal with it except um, detect it early, monitor uh, closely and intervene with steroids. Um, and I think the most uh, Evolving data is coming from the cytopenias. So we also reported and from our um, data from the University of Munich in collaboration with uh, the University of Tübingen and University of Hamburg um, that there is prolonged cytopenia in over 80% of the patients and that we have some patients who have very prolonged cytopenias over going 40 days in which we also have used already successful successful autologous um, stem cell transplant, um, as we luckily had um, those from prior treatment lines. But I think at the current time point, also looking at the data from others, from Locke et al, showing that we also have prolonged CD4 lymphocytopenia, and we also have prolonged hypogamma globulinia, um, one has to be aware that we have to do thorough monitoring and use prophylactic antibiotics, antiviral and antifungal prophylaxis, and in some cases also um, immune globulin substitution in, in these patients. And I think we are developing guidelines in particularly for antifungal prophylaxis. And here, I think the data is clear that additional um, application of steroids makes these patients in particularly at high risk for opportunistic infections. But um, these data are evolving. And, and I think currently we can clearly say, please be aware, watch these patients closely and apply um, prophylaxis um, treatments in these patients.